Welcome everyone to another Up to the Time presentation. Today we are in Creta and we will be creating a silhouette show. So first thing, let's go over to the folder. Now, so this is an exercise that I took from a book called Silhouettes on Show. I gave this to my students and they had the option of either creating a silhouette by hand or using a computer app. Most students decided to use Krita to create their silhouette show. The students are actually fascinated by Krita. Some students were able to get it done, but some students were struggling with the inserting of the people and the objects. So I have done a silhouette and let's have a look. I have this one and then I altered it here. So this is silhouette on show one and silhouette on show two. The main difference is the gradient of the sky. That's all. But I would show you all how I actually arrived at this. I started this from a sketch. This is the sketch here. The sketch was scanned and inserted into Krita. And then from there, I was able to draw and trace over the sketch. So let's go through the process. This is all the items that I use in my folder. And this is my original one here. Okay. So let's start now. Let's go over to Krita. And we will start with a new document. To do this, we can press Control N. That brings up a new document, and you're able to set it up here at this point. So I'm going to go over to inches, inches. So the width is 11 inches, the height is 8.5, and the orientation is landscape. So now I hit create. And right here we have it. We have a blank sheet. So what's the first thing I'm going to do? I need to bring in my reference image because I need to trace over that. I'm going to use this tool called the reference images tool. Click that. Then I come over to my tool options and then I click the plus button or better known as the add reference image. I click that and then I search for where I have my images saved. Okay, I think I found it. Yeah, this is my sketch here. I'm just going to set it up on the sheet. Yeah, I think that's good enough. Here, yeah. turn down the opacity. I think 58% is good. If anything, I would adjust it as we proceed. So that is good. And right now we are on a paint layer. So I have brought in my reference. Now I need to turn on a vector layer. So I go down here, I hit plus, add vector layer. Now I'm on vector layer. Now, what's the next thing? We need to use the rectangle tool. I created a whole tutorial of how to use this tool. I would add the description in the link below. For you, for those of you who are unfamiliar with this tool, you can check out that presentation. and You will learn everything you need to know about the rectangle tool. Anyway, let's proceed. So I selected the rectangle tool. I am on a vector layer. And what's the next thing? I'm going to select the color. I've selected the color. And I have my beach silhouette palette right here. So all the colors that I'll be using, I have them saved right here, beach silhouette palette. So I've selected the color, which I'm going to replace in my rectangle in. What's the next thing? Now, it asks me geometry options. The fill, foreground color, outline, brush background color so i'm going to have 
fill with the foreground color, which would be this color, the foreground color selector. And then outline, I'm going to have no outline. I don't want an outline. Now, I start. So to use this tool, I'm going to left click in the corner and then move across diagonally to the next corner. And that is it. That is how you use this tool. So I'm just going to go around to the different rectangles that I can see and just insert them with this simple process here. Right. So I'm building this um, structure that we see here. It shouldn't be too hard for, for you guys at home once you understand the basic technique. Now I've made a mistake here. I can either go back by pressing Control Z to undo, or I can edit this. I think I'm going to edit by just stretching that there and just stretching this out here. All right. To zoom in, I just take the mouse and press the middle scroll button to zoom in. Okay, that looks good. That looks good. Great. Now let's go back to the rectangle tool. Let's continue drawing this. So I think my main structure is in. Yeah. Now, what's next? I need to put in the handrail. Now, for this next feature that I'll be putting in, I would be using the line tool. I would not be using the rectangle tool, but I'm going to name my layer now. So this says vector layer two. I'm going to rename this layer and I'm going to call it structure. Structure, or you can call it building. So that's the structure there. And now I'm going to go over to my line tool right here. And I'm going to be using, what brush am I going to be using for my line tool? I'm going to keep it simple. So I'm going to select the basic, all right, basic five size. I generally use that, that, that brush. And I'm going to bring down my line size to something like three. Okay. I know. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reference the size that I used in my previous drawing. So hold on, let me just go here. That's R. Now, when I'm pressing R, R actually finds the layer that you want. Doesn't seem to be working at this moment. So I'm going to be looking into these layers. Okay, so this is the building. Okay, so I've gotten that. And let's look at the line, the properties now. Okay, so that's the line thickness of two. That's all I wanted. So my line thickness here, as I draw, needs to be two. But we can't set up the line until we've drawn the line. So I need to draw the line. So for this one, I want to make sure that my line is straight. That it is directly parallel to the page. So I'm going to click first, and then I'm going to hold down my shift, and then draw. And stretch the line out to where I want it. There. And that's my line. Now let's check the size. So I'm going to go to the pointer tool, select the line, and then pull down here. And it's at three. The last one was at two. So we'll just place it at two, right? Okay. 
Now, once we have done that, we can continue drawing the rest. No. Now, where's what's going to happen here? We need these horizontal, these vertical lines, sorry, right here to end this off. So again, you hold on shift, we drag it down. All right. And that's in there like that. Let's just check the reference. Okay. So this comes up, I brought this out a little more to here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to beef these up to, yeah, I'm going to keep these at three. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put the whole thing at three. Just so, so it's thicker and better. Just slightly thicker, not too thick. So now let's place in this, this rail here. So what I'm going to do is copy by pressing Control C, copy, and then I'm going to bring my mouse cursor to here and press Control Alt V, and I have paste that in, and then I just press my down arrow, and now that is in. Right, nice and easy. Now this is where it gets kind of tricky here. We need to divide this surface into how many equal parts? I don't know, but I got a little trick for doing that. So the first thing is I'm gonna set up a construction line here. And how do I do that? I press against these measurements here, and just pull, and then you get a line that comes over, and that is my guideline. So I'm gonna choose the distance. So I've chosen this distance here, right? Then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come here and press Control Alt V, paste that in here, okay? and then move these lines by pulling them back to the measurements, pull them back, and they disappear. Good. I'm now going to select these two. I'm going to make a group out of them. I'm then going to copy, then I'm going to paste, and then I'm going to move them and put them in like this. Okay. And group. And then I'll just delete this one here. It might be an easier method for doing this, but I am not aware of it. So please forgive me. If you if yours at home and found an easier method, please let me know. I think uh, I think that works better for me. Okay. So the hand rail is in. Let's have a look at the original one. Okay, so we need division of one, two. So the hand rail is divided into three spaces. So we, we're gonna put that in shortly. But before we go any further, let me just save this document. Control S, save this, and it's called slideshow. Silhouette. Show. Let's call it Silhouette Show 2. It was the original one, or the second one. All right, so that's save. All good. All good there. Now the structure is in. Now let us you now grab this line here. And I'm going to Control C. And I'm going to bring it, my cursor here. Control Alt V. All right. And I'm going to bring this back and slide it back to there. And I'm going to drag this out to here. And 
into see into all the be. Okay, so these two need to go up slightly. Okay, see what happens. Just no need to come down. What? Yeah. I think now let's even there. That is as even as it's going to get. It's not going to get more even than this. Let's check the, the reference one. Okay. Okay. Let me just bring this in a little bit. Let me just take this. Oh, no, a little bit. Right there. Okay. Good. Now, what's the next step? We already got the structure. The structure is complete. Let's turn on and turn off the layer. We can see that. No, the structure is incomplete. We need to put in the supports at the bottom here. So again, we use L, sorry, we use the line, the line tool, and we're going to increase the size. So I'm going to come here to this corner and put it down. Yeah. Yeah. What's the size there, though? Let's see what size we have here. Size 2. Let's go to size 7. Yeah, and we don't want it overlapping here. Right. So copy. Let's bring the pressure there. Let's go all the way. You have to stretch this thing. Right. Control Alt V. Is the Indian? Let me stretch that in place now. Perfect. Now let's go the opposite side. I can Control Alt V and then mirror. I'm going to do that. Control Alt V, paste, and then right click. Go transform and mirror horizontally. Yeah. And that's how we got that in. Nice, cheap, and sweet. How I like it. Okay, so let's see. Let's create a reference guide here. I'm going to click the top here and pull down the construction line to there. Right, so what this tells me is that I need to reduce the size here just slightly. Here, so that I need, so then I can adjust here. Okay, that's good. Let's copy and go C and go all B. And then let me transform, mirror, good. Oh, that seems to be in well. Just bring this down slowly. Yeah, okay, I'm happy with that position. So control all the feet. And transform, mirror horizontally. Let's bring back at this diagram and see how things are down here. If everything is on the same level. So this now needs to come down slightly.
The trick to this is that some has been trying to adjust an area, these guidelines, you actually end up clicking on the guidelines rather than clicking on the area that you want to adjust. That's something the, the, the stress. And I don't think you can lock these guidelines so that you don't click on them. No. So the structure is in the supports at the bottom. The handrails are in. Let's look back at the original and see. Let's see the size of the support here. Okay, so the size of the supports are 10. I think I can put mine at 10 too. Yeah. Then let's see those. Now people are trusting. They might not want to go on a structure that looks, that looks thin, but they were trusting. Okay, cool. Now, what's the next stage? We need to establish where the horizon line is. So I'm going to use my ship to get a straight line. And that is where our horizon line is going to be. Actually, I'm going to put that line on a new layer. Um, earlier, let me just start go over to the line two. Let me click here and let me just go down shape. And yeah, so that, that's the horizon. Let me just reference the original. Okay. Okay, good. Let's just leave it there for now. This is subject to change. Now we need to now insert the sky and the water. All right, how am I going to do that? But first, I think we need to crop this image. So let's go to the crop tool and let's see that here because you're not working with the entire. Yeah. So that's the area that we're focusing on, right? nothing outside there now let us turn on a paint layer so i'm going to come down here to the bottom where we start off with this paint layer paint layer one i'm going to call it background okay so now let's select the area we want using the rectangular selection tool and this is the area that I want from my horizon line here. I just go slightly below the horizon line, and then I just pull a rectangle to the upper corner, the upper left hand corner. All right, so that's my rectangle there that I'm using. And then I'm going to go over to the gradient tool, gradient, select the gradient tool. And this is where I then need to select my colors. So the first thing is, I need two colors to create this gradient. I'm going to select the foreground color. So I have toggled onto the foreground color. And let's select a foreground color. This is the foreground color I'm using, color 135 for foreground. And now for the background, I need color 140. 140. So the foreground color is first, the background color is second. So what does this mean when I pull my gradient? I'm going to start off with my foreground and go into my background. So up here is going to be the orange and at the bottom is going to be the yellow. Let's pull down this line to give me uh, a gradient. Okay, so what happened here is I never adjust the style gradient that I want. So I'm going to undo, and then I'm going to come back, click here. And now I've selected where, as you see, these two colors in 
the same frame, right? So these two colors are what create the fill. So we come here, we start, and we pull down. Okay, so far, so good. But let's undo. I kind of play, I like to play along with this until I get it where I want it, rather than just go on the first option. So let's, uh, let's keep it there. But what we need to do is turn off the ghost layer in the background, which we've been working with, the reference image layer. So I'm going to click on that and I'm turning down the opacity to zero. This gives me a better understanding of what's going on in the background there. All right. Mm -hmm. So now that that is in, no. To release the selection, press Control Shift A. That gets that releases you from the selection. And now what I need to do is I need to create a selection for the water. So I come here, create my selection using the selection tool. Go over to gradient. And let's select the colors we're going to be using for the water. All right. So I know this color 137 and no, you know this color 136, then 140. So it's 136 there, then you switch over to the background color, and that's 140. It's 136 first, four row, and back row 140, and then we start off here by pulling this one. Yep, and that there is my water. But, you know, I always, yeah. So the original feed is here. So I start right here and then I come down to here. That's how you get the original feed. But then what I want to do is I want to darken. Yeah, so I just add a secondary feed, right? Or I can keep it at the original and then use another layer, add a secondary fade, and then turn down the opacity. But so far, so good. Let's get out the selection. So I'm finished with that now. Now, what I need to do is go back to my reference. And if you realize that this is on the shore, right now, this is floating in the deer. So I can hit my structure. I move it and I just move it down here somewhere. Or what I'm going to have to do is we're going to have to reduce the bottom. Yeah, something needs to be adjusted. All right. I think I got an idea. So let's bring this down to here or about here. What happens then is that. This now is going to be our um, portion. So we can leave it like that, and I can then create a new selection for the sky. Okay. And let's set back at these colors again. So that's you know. And then put it like that and then we go. Over to the gradient too. Okay. So this back to there, we can get rid of that. That line there, it's not serving any purpose anymore. Okay, control. Okay. So, so far, that is the sky in and the background. Sorry, the sky and the ocean in. But that's not all. We need to do a little bit more. 
to this. And what do we need now? We need to create a new vector layer and we will call this the ground. Ground. And what goes on to this? Well, we grab a the rectangle tool and we get the color we want. Or ground color, outline more, outline, and we do this. Okay. Yeah. Or it's a bit too thick. Let's give a thinner one. If you don't get so thick. Yeah, I think that's good enough there. And let's move the structure to do. So now the structure is there. Let's let's play with the size of the background there, right? Uh, and probably we might need to do that. Right. Might need to do that. Or what we can do is we can bring everything up. I think we will bring everything up. And just remove the excess at the bottom. Okay. Yeah, that's what we do. So we'll bring everything up and then I'll prop the bottom at a convenient point. It's not no, it's not convenient to crop the bottom. Let me just bring this over to prepare for the um for the coconut tree. Okay, so the basics are in. Let's save that. Control S to save. Now, the next thing is we need to bring in the trees and we need to bring in the humans. Then we're going to place the sun in. Okay. So let's go over to the folder where I have everything. And these are the trees here. And these are the humans. We get a man, and his child, and his wife. We got these two trees here. So I'm going to use, doesn't really matter which tree bring in. I would bring in this one. And I just try in, and the first thing I do is insert as new layer. So it's here, and this is where I need to get this white off because this white isn't going to serve me, nor this black. So that's the first thing. So let me grab the selection tool here, which I call the magic one. Let me just look at my options. Now leave the selection there. Go on to a paint there. Grab the bucket, paint fill, and right, drop it in there into the selection, the open selection onto a new layer. Now, you might do this and you might find that you still have areas that, you know, didn't quite get the paint. So I'm going to use my freehand brush, increase the size to something like 150 plus, between 150 to 200, and just rub over the selection. This make sure this will this ensures that you actually get the paint distributed all over. That's what I do for a little while. Then once I'm done there, then get out the selection. So that's it there. Now <laughs> what I'm gonna do to just increase this is sharpen this layer. Mm. Ah. You go to enhance, so you filter enhance and then you go sharpen. And that tends to sharpen the layer if you want that. So just look and see what happens here before you go. So I go enhance and I go and sharpen, and that gives it a slight sharpen, sharpen the edges. Now we need to move this into place. And that goes there, right? Nice, cheap, and sweet. Let's move the structure to the right, to the right. Yeah, let's go back to the paint layer where we have this. We move this, 
over there. And if I go back to my original one, all right, I have two trees. One is small and one is large. So I'm going to tilt this one here slightly, then bring it over here. So this will be the smaller of the two. Go back, you see the red? Yep. So be smaller the two. And then now I'm going to copy. So let's label this as tree. Tree one. Tree one. Then I'm going to duplicate, right click, duplicate, duplicate layer or mask. Then I'm going to go to the duplicate selection and just increase it. Right. Then now I'm going to rotate it. So I definitely need to move the structure. I'm actually thinking that the structure might be too large. Let me just slightly scale it down. Can you bring it to ground too? And if you bring it to ground, then we move both trees. So I'm just adjusting this now. Not really doing a lot, just setting it up so that you can. Let me just check the, the original reference. Okay, so that's the da 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 Got it. So you can need to make sure so that the image reads well. Just punch that up slightly like that. Yep, structure. Yep, structure. Like that. Okay. So what we want to do now is we just want to do a little cropping. All right, so far so good. We got in our main elements. We got in the trees, we got in the structure. Now what we are going to do is insert people. Should be very easy. I'm going to grab people here. I'm just going to drag them in, insert as new layer. And what then am I going to do? I'm going to use my, what I call the magic wand. Tool here, remove the selection, try to get the white out of them. So, this all this does is remove the white. Okay. Remove the white, but you know what? We don't really need to do that. You know, we can select the block, cut it, control X, cut it, delete this layer. Then it has the structure, go on to a new. Paint layer, so we got here a new paint layer just idle. And what I can do is I'm going to paint in here. Yeah, you see, that's what we do. We just reel that around, make sure the paint is distributed evenly, and then control shift A. Yep, that's my people in. Let me just label this as people now. Let's 
put them into place. So they're definitely too big to scale them down. Can me hold on shift and we go to the corner. If you don't hold on shift and go to the corner, you get this craziness happening where you can't control the scale and things can get all wonky. So you always hold shift, then you move the corner. That means no matter how I pull, these will be scaled uniformly. Right? And that is what you're looking for. I'm going to pull it here because once this guy is right here, that means he can get through this doorway and there's still enough. Um, yeah, there's definitely, it's a good space. It's a good size. It's a good size. So I'm just going to even reduce it slightly. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Is he standing on the ground? No. Let me know. Yeah. But now he's standing on the ground. So I think that looks good. That's a good size. That's a good. Yeah, he looks good there. Yeah, and family. So far, so good. Now. <clears throat> What can I do now? I need to put in the sun. Let's look at the sun. How was it put in? Just a simple circle. Right. Let me see this color. You put the color. Okay. So I come over here, so I'm going to go to a new vector layer, this one, vector layer, and I grab my circle and I choose the spot. And enter. I'm holding down my shift and my control at the same time. Shift to make sure that as I'm dragging it up, I always maintain the circular formation and control because I want to I want to control it from the middle. So I think this looks good. This is a good side. Okay. Didn't expect that, but whatever. So now I am going to reduce it slightly and then put it into place. So it goes right here and it's not going to be a full circle so this gets interesting i'm going to come to my select shape tool select the shape and then what i'm going to do i'm going to go over here to edit then i'm going to go to path and look at what happens here look at why this shape is so large this shape is so large because of this look at the thickness of this line the thickness of the line is 214 let's put the thickness to one and you will see that the shape is not that large anymore and i like it at the thickness of one so that when i remove here so i have converted it now to a vector now it's always a vector layer but i have changed the path so now i can adjust here like this and remove so you can remove segment or just what's it now? Break up segment and look at that. I can then start to break away this and then get back my half circle and that fits in there beautifully. Oh I like it, I like it, I hope you like it. I like it. Mm -hmm. so what I'm gonna do just increase the scale. Uh, just through here, I can increase the scale like this too. Just slightly, and that fits in there nicely. Right, so that's my sun there in the background, as you can see. Now, what's the next thing? Now, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? The next thing is I need to put in the texture of the waves because you know the sea looks boring just just there. So for this, I created a, I created this in AutoCAD, a series of lines, but I need to convert this to a JPEG. 
So that's not too bad. I'm just going to go over here to Photoshop. I already inserted it and then I'm just going to save as, and I'm going to save this as a JPEG image. And that's all. You just drag this into Photoshop and you can just save it as a JPEG image just like that. And just bring it in here. Just go JPEG, JPEG image. Okay. So now we're back over here. And now it's a JPEG image. Now you just bring it in, insert as new layer. And look at what we have here. Uh, I can just adjust the, the blend mode to screen. Work. Let's start with normal and come down to the other overlay. Soft light. Divide. I actually am looking. The trick is here. I want these lines to be dark for the first one, and then for the second one, I want them to be white. So I'm going to insert it twice. Right? I'm just going through the different blend modes to see which one I like. I'm making go back to the original one and grab that information there. But I'm just showing you at home how, how I normally work. So I'm going to go to, is there soft light on here? Okay, soft light. Yeah, soft light. Let's work with soft light. And grab, and grab this. And then I insert it here, but then this is what I do to make it interesting. You bring this up, right? So you will, yeah, right? And I don't think so, like, it's going to work for that overlay now. Saturation. Divide. The more divide looks good. Okay, I'm gonna work with divide a bit then. I'll work this one divide. And where do I put in this in relationship to everything? So I'm gonna bounce this there down. And uh, this there is just above the background. All right, so that's in. Now, the next thing now is we need to show the area where the sun sets. Let's look at this one. You need to put some more emphasis around here. So I'm going to, let me just look at these lines that I use for this. So get onto them. No. Anyway. I like this little, I like the effect that when you look at the ocean, you can see some reflection. These reflections, I like that. So I'm going to go with that. That wasn't in the original image. I'll keep burn on this first one and then I'll divide on the second one. But then what I also need to do is I need to copy this layer again. And this time I'm going to shrink it. Yeah, like that, just shrink it. And I'm going to then remove parts of it. This is where I'm going to keep everything else is removed. Right? Let me just throw it out like that. Yeah. So, why did I do that? Hmm.
that emphasizes the area where there's a shadow. So that's all. No, not a shadow, a reflection. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Then what I do is duplicate this again. And this time I'm going to shift the position like that. And the, yeah. Yeah. So to give that effect. <laughs> no. And then for this second one, I'm not going to have the opacity so right. I'm just going to reduce it to around there. And I'm going to work with a polygon and then just clean it. Some bits. So I go to each layer. Right, I think I got that. Yeah, so, so that's it. No. Whew. Now, what's the next thing? Now, the last thing that I did is I placed a wood texture onto the final drawing. So as I can express the clouds and also show a little bit of movement in the water. Let's so I'm grab my wood texture, just drag it in. Yeah, insert a new layer. Just use the transformation tool, hold down shift. Open it like that, and this wood texture goes all the way to the top, right? Yeah, turn down the blend mode to normal. Nope, overlay, overlay looks good. Screen now, soft light. I think I play between overlay and overlay and soft light, right? Overlay. I think I'm going to go with soft light. Let's just look at all of them. No, let's go with soft light and start wasting time. Soft light, good. What did I do? No. <clears throat> I grab a selection and I took out it from here so that it doesn't affect the water. And then I'm going to add another one to the water, which will be slightly different. So do I have that here? No. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this wood. Yeah. And then I'm going to bring this one down here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink it. Like that, and let's see what else, what it can do. Mm -hmm. The one thing I always go through my my options first before I decide. Because sometimes I even know what what I'm going to go for. But I just like to always explore my options. Yeah, I'm going to go for the soft light. I'm going to turn it down to 60, 60, 61. Just make sure that it is here. 
here. And then what's the next thing? I'm going to put that down. I don't like that because it's showing a line through the drawing. Yeah. So I'm going to keep these textures at the end. Let's have a look here at the original one and see how I dealt with that. Okay. So I'm going to grab these trees. Put them in a group. And I'm going to move them up above the texture. Yeah. And I'm going to grab the people, put them in a group, and do the same too. Move them above. And I'm going to do the same thing for the ground too. Okay, so that means the texture is only on the sky and the ocean. <clears throat> okay, so let's just leave that there. I think that looks good. And this is a rock. This is a rock. So what did we do today? We created a silhouette from a sketch that I produced. This is to read the sketch. The sketch is right. The sketch is right here. And I transformed the sketch into this image. Uh, I had my color palette from before. I studied the image and I determined the colors I want to use, and those are the colors there to create the sunset. So what I did in the end is I came back here and I went over the background and I inserted another blend. All right, anything else that I use here? Oh, I placed in these rectangles here to add some definition to the water. You can do that again. Yeah. And come back here. Add a new one. Then what can we do with this now that it's at this level? We can then export it and create an image from it. So I can go here, file. Export. Let's call this silhouette show three. I hope everyone understood this and was able to learn something from this exercise. You should try creating your own silhouette. You now, these could be fun, and when you're finished, you can save it as a JPEG and carry it to a printery and you can print this and you can stick this up in your room. And that would be your first digital art that you actually can call a piece of art. You move it from the digital world into the physical world. All right, that brings us to the end of this video tutorial. This was a large and a long video tutorial. I hope everyone was able to keep up with the pace and uh, had fun learning how to create silhouettes. Practice, practice, and until next time, take care. I am out.